Hi, Julia. Hi. Thanks for uh, taking the time to, uh, to spend um, yeah, some time answering my, my questions. Oh, thank you, Frank. Thank you for inviting me and uh, to be able to talk about Brazil, which Thanks. is always very important at the moment. I actually um, spoke to um, a doctor in Brazil. This, I think it was one of my first interviews um, mm -hmm. during the, the crisis, um, Thiago Henrique Silva, who, uh, who was already, like maybe three months ago now, very worried about well, what was to come. And... Um, and actually, since then, uh, and maybe even more so in the last months or something, the, the cases in Brazil have gone through the roof. Um, and actually, a month ago, um, a famed uh, Brazilian oncologist, uh, Drauzio Varela, said that Brazil was condemned to an um, historic tragedy uh, because mainly of Bol Bolsonaro virus response. Um, do you think, do you truly believe that things could have been different with somebody else in power? Yeah, I do. I do actually think that Bolsonaro is, is pretty much guilty. Um, just to give you an idea of the numbers at the moment, um, and these are figures from the Press Association because um, we can't rely on, on government figures at the moment too much. So they're saying that we have at the moment, as of yesterday, about 1.8 million people infected in Brazil, and just over 72,000 people have died. So it's a huge proportion. I think Brazil is, is only behind the US in terms of, of, of number of infections. So yeah, why, why is Bolsonaro, why would I say Bolsonaro is guilty? Because Brazil, despite um, being a developing country, probably has one of the most important and largest NHS or national health services in, in the world. It has um, a reasonably good capillarity. It has, for example, 300,000 community agencies, agents that spread all over the country and uh, and there was no I mean obviously all countries would have suffered and Brazil would have suffered as well there's no doubt about that but it could have been doing a lot better and apart from that Brazil had something like three months to prepare if you think about the fact that um, the virus first started in China and then went on to Europe and we were watching all this developing so that this was time enough for Brazil maybe not enough but to put Brazil in a better situation um, to address the virus the other thing that Brazil had as well as its um, health service is a well-developed benefit se um, sector we had the Bolsa Familia which um, um, had uh, a single registration for a large part of the population that could have been expanded very quickly and support could have been provided to the Brazilian population a lot faster than it did. Bolsonaro at first didn't want to give any, any um, help to, to that population and it was the Congress that then eventually and decided to put a package of 600 reais to provide um, to to people, and even then, that was done in a way it wasn't. They didn't use the system that was there. People had to go to the bank and queue, and probably infect themselves as well. Um, when we had already a system, a very well a system, but worked very well in terms of distributing money to the Brazilian population. So for these two reasons, I think Bolsonaro um, is guilty. He's also guilty because he's been giving mixed messages. So he himself has been denying the importance of the disease. He's been asking people to go out in the streets despite uh, what the state governors um, have been trying to do. We have, we have now no health minister in place. And the health minister he had was forced 
to resign because he was becoming very popular because Brazil at, at the start, the health minister was trying to do something about the crisis. Then we had a second um, health minister and he, he resigned almost straight away when he realized that he was going to get absolutely no support. And we have at the moment a military man in power. And thirdly, there is no coordination whatsoever between the federal government and the state and municipalities. And they've been pretty much left to do what they want on their own without any sort of coordination. So I think Bolsonaro is, is very much guilty um, about the situation that's going, um, going on in Brazil. And, I th and, and, and he has been taken... Um, to justice as well uh, for the, you know, some people are calling it a crime, a crime of genocide that he's causing to Brazil. Yeah, I think we, we can go back to, to this, um, you know, in a, in a few moments. Um, how po political the current crisis is. I mean, we, we know uh, the recent history in Brazil uh, with um, the jailing of President Lula, the impeachment of Dilma Rousseff, who many in Brazil and abroad are, are calling um, a coup. Um, you know, this, uh, the response, I mean, the rise of Bolsonaro and, and his response to the crisis is very political and he's, he's obviously trying to appeal to a, a very specific part of the Brazilian class and, and population, right? Um, um, I would say, of course, we can't deny the fact that this is a health crisis. Um, it's a health crisis that's affecting the whole world. But it's a health crisis that arrived in Brazil in exactly the worst moment that it, it could have arrived, basically. Um, our political crisis really didn't start with Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro is more, more the result, the outcome of the impeachment of, of President Rousseff, what we call a coup, and then all the lawfare against um, President Lula. And really by putting Lula in prison, it uh, made it, opened up the way for Bolsonaro, because what happened was the population, although we had something like 11, if I'm not wrong, um, presidential hopefuls, in the, in the first round in Brazil. And um, all of them were rejected, you know. The only person that who could have had any chance at all would have been um, Lula. And um, he, the, the Workers' Party candidate, instead of Lula Haddad, did come in, in second place. So he was well placed by this. And uh, as President Dilma says, and I think she's absolutely right, and she has been saying for a long time this, what the coup in Brazil did was to basically implode the whole of the right, the center right, and we were basically left with Bolsonaro. But Brazil basically is going through three crises at the moment, uh, a political crisis, an economic crisis, crisis which was exacerbated by the political crisis and on top of that now the health crisis so it's a it's a very <laughs> serious situation for a country that did have the ability to be somewhere else really it didn't have to be where it is at the moment and i remember when i spoke to to tiago Henrique silva um we know brazil is a highly unequal uh, country, um, socially, economically. Um, I mean, the difference between the wealth, uh, the difference of wealth between the rich and the poor is, is incredible. Yeah. Um, does this mean that people, depending on their status, I guess, have a different access to health and, and medicine? Absolutely. Um, we have um, we have two hospitals in Brazil, two private hospitals. One is called the Einstein, and the other is called the Sirio Libanese. As it happens, there are two two um, of the large 
uh, communities that we have in Brazil, the Israeli, the, the, the Jewish community and, and the Lebanese uh, community who have become reasonably rich and they've managed to make two absolutely excellent hospitals. For the Einstein, I think, can be counted as probably one of the best hospitals in the world. And um, they have amazing care, amazing research, but this is for the very, very rich, basically, only the, the people who are able to have enough money can, can access that. We do have, um, like I said, a, a, a national health service, which is in certain things pretty, pretty, pretty good. So it had a very good, um, for example, system on how to combat AIDS, for example, uh, hepatitis was something else, hepatitis C was something else that they were quite good at. And, and, and it's, it's quite, like I said, it has a lot of capillarity, but it does have a lot of failings. It depends where you are. It, um, it depends on the state that you're in. And then Brazil is also a very diverse country in, sen in the sense that you have communities in the middle of the Amazon. Indigenous people, for example, should by law have their own health care, which is also being ignored by, by this government. But apart from that, apart from the actual access to uh, medication and to health care, the other problem with, with access to being healthy is is the the, the 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 social discrepancies the, the social difference between the population you have um, regions in brazil some of the favelas where the ambulances can't reach you have places where you have no water so it's very difficult for you to be able to look after yourself in a situation like we we're going through at the moment if you have no water so yeah social inequality in brazil is very serious and it affects people's health and in, in this regard, I wanted to speak about, um, you know, the, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, in, uh, in the USA has been uh, once again following the, the murder of uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor at the, at the forefront of, of the political um, news, I guess. Um, and it has highlighted again um, police killings and, and, you know, the, the problem of policing in the US, uh, but Brazil also is in a very dark place, correct? When it comes yeah. to indigenous and lives and black lives. Yeah, I, so I, well, I wanted to have mentioned with regard to the, the first question, the situation of the indigenous people, which is also something Bolsonaro is probably gonna have to, <coughs> to answer for, is the fact that um, um, the way that he speaks and the things that he does sort of encourages um, people to, to go in, invade indigenous people's lands. And indigenous people, they have, especially those who have been isolated, less immunity um, to COVID and, and are dying in greater numbers because of that. They're also dying because of violence, because there's been a lot of, a lot of violence. Brazil's always had a problem with violence. It didn't start with, um, with, with the coup as such. Um, Dilma's and, and um, Lula's government, if they had a, a great failing in the fact that they weren't able to address issues of social security. So, Black people were dying in the in the favela, especially young black men, um, during their governments. And in fact, if anything, um, violence was spread to the middle-sized city cities, whereas before it used to be concentrated in in Rio and São Paulo and the bigger cities more. Um, but since the coup and then with Bolsonaro, this has been exacerbated has been a huge number of police killings. Um, the Amnesty International talks about 30,000 people killed a year, 77% of which are black, uh, which is a huge number. And, and we've had a couple of, uh, well, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a similar incident to, to the George 
uh, Floyd where a woman was dragged by a police car and, and the policeman was holding her with his boot on her neck you know, that sort of came out last week. So we've had these problems for a very, very long time as well. And, and Black Lives Matter is something that should be and is just as important in Brazil as, as it is in the USA. And, and there are people, you know, the, the black movements have been talking about this for a very long time. It's not something new. It's not something that's just come to our attention through Black Lives Matter, although it's very important that it's there to, to remind us that this is going on as well. I, I wanted to go back to what you've spoken about just, um, just before, um, the, the calls for impeachment of Bolsonaro. Uh, and again, when I spoke to Tiago about three months ago, he was saying, in a way that the movement and activists and 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 and, the, and lawyers um, have had decided in a way that the crisis and the health crisis was so important that this was number one priority, and that maybe uh, calling for impeachment and stuff will distract a lot of energy from um, fighting the crisis. But you spoke about um, the fact that Bolsonaro might have to respond to the law in, in regards to the, the crisis and, and other, obviously, cases he's been involved in. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about that? It, it's a very difficult situation, to be honest, because we are in a crisis and, and really we should be concentrating on, on health and the economic situation of the people who can't work, really. This is really what, what Brazil should be dealing and addressing at the moment. But a, a, a lot of people in Brazil, more and more, think that with Bolsonaro in power, that's not simply not possible. You know, he's he's he seems unable to 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 address the situation. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a very it's something that. I think most a lot of Brazilians are thinking about whether to take both try to do something about Bolsonaro right now in the middle of this crisis or to wait for something to happen. Bolsonaro, um, there's three possibilities of Bolsonaro being removed from power. One is an impeachment and there are a number of people who do call for an impeachment, um, both left, center, and, and right. Although there are some people on the right who believe that, oh, let's see what Bolsonaro, maybe we can tame him. They're still under this idea that we can tame Bolsonaro. So there is no, um, there's not enough force at the moment, either in Congress or in society, for everybody to come together um, to impeach him. That's what I would say. Whether this is going to move on, I don't know. The other possibility, because of the fake news uh, inquiry that's going on at the moment, there's a possibility of trying to um, annul his, his election so that both him and his vice president would go and you would have then to call new elections. Um, that's another possibility. It's a more interesting possibility uh, for us because um, the problem isn't just Bolsonaro, it's, it's also the, the economic policies that come with Bolsonaro. So getting rid of Bolsonaro, you get rid of the most more crazy things that go on, but you wouldn't necessarily uh, get rid of 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 the direction that Brazil is going at the moment of privatization of greater um, differences between the rich and the poor uh, and everything else that's happening in Brazil and the third possibility, which is always a possibility is is simple criminal a criminal charge against bolsonaro of which a lot of legal academics believe that there are grounds for that as well to take place. But I, I, I personally can't see right now um, enough of a movement to, to impeach Bolsonaro. Thanks. I wanted to end by asking um, 
a question. You've mentioned how, in a way, divided Brazil was in terms of of of, um, of access to education, health, in terms of uh, uh, wealth, um, and and also in terms of, I guess, political ideas and political vision. Um, I mean, history and even like, you know, um, very short term history has shown us that a socialist experiment in, in uh, Latin America or South America was possible, but, but was going to be fought very hard. You know, the backlash uh, from, from its opponents or, you know, most of the time and most of them having been supported by the U.S., uh, has been enormous and we've seen uh, what's happening in, in, in Cuba, in Venezuela in the last few years. Um, but do you believe that someone, somebody or a party or political movement could actually manage to unite as best as possible a, a country like Brazil, despite the incredible differences? Um, I, I, I don't, I think, Brazil has, it does have a problem. It sounds like a cliche, but it does have a problem with its elite that doesn't actually believe in in the people of Brazil and the way that, you know, the Brazil can make its own way and can be a strong enough country without having to, to look at the USA or Europe for, for its solutions. I think that's, that's definitely a real problem. Um, I believe that there was, and then we have seen from the latest um, car wash leakings, uh, that there was some American involvement, FBI involvement in, in, in um, what's going on in Brazil at the moment. But I also believe that not, none of this would be possible unless a part of the Brazilian elite was interested in 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 doing this. Okay, I think Brazil is a strong enough country um, for it not to have the sort of intervention that just from the Americans without the 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 the, the help of the Brazilian side. Having said this, that Brazil is is changing. Brazil, I I I feel very hopeful for the future of Brazil in the sense that. Uh, you have a very different population coming through. That there has been a, a change in, in, in education in Brazil. If you look at university in Brazil at the moment, 50% of the people who go to university are black. This has been almost, a, a, you could call a, a revolution um, in, in the past few years of what the Lula and Dilma government did. And... Uh, the poorer population of Brazil, the, the, the young people who are coming up now, they're not as subservient as they used to be. You know, you can see the number of movements that, that we have in Brazil, in the streets, in the black movements, women's movements, indigenous people. They are incredibly organized at the moment, you know, really um, very good, intelligent well-educated leaders. Um, so I think Brazil is a, is a changed country. And this is, I hope it's a backlash uh, that will be reverted in, in the future. That's, that's what I, I hope at least. Um, but Brazil does have one problem which is very big at the moment, which is the conservative churches. So we talk a lot about fake news. Fake news was definitely important in Bolsonaro's election. But another important thing was as well the, the, the force of the new evangelical, very conservative churches whereas people have gone and listened to the pastors as to how they should be voting. And I think that's not something that's affecting just Brazil, but it's certainly we can see that sort of thing going on in the USA. I don't know how, how much it affects Europe, but yeah. But I, I, in the future, I have, I don't know what sort of future we're talking about, but I am hopeful about Brazil and its population. Thanks, Julia. It's a, I mean, it's always good to hear, you know, and sort of optimistic or, or positive message uh, at the end. Because, I mean, what history has shown us, I guess, is that, you know, oppressions and dictatorships tend to to fall at one point or another, right? So um, hopefully, um, 
this one won't last too too long in in brazil so thanks no, again hopefully not Julia. okay thank you very nice thank you very much for interviewing me it was great speaking you're welcome to you. thank and you Julia. good luck with your project thanks thanks